Levine, Electronics Editor for Consumer Reports, and we are at CES 2014. We're going to be doing a bunch of uh, our Talking Tech podcasts from the show, and we're going to start off with our two video experts. We have here Jim Wilcox, who is our TV expert, and Terry Sullivan, who is our expert on camcorders and cameras. And um, it seems that this was the year of Ultra HD, or at least when uh, the manufacturers seem to get serious about Ultra HD. It's not just super high-end sets anymore. There seems to be a ton of them. What, what have you seen here? Yeah, I mean, certainly there are, you know, the sort of showstopper pieces. There are 105, 110 inch sets. Yeah, but a lot I think, of large TVs again. I don't know why that race came from. You but, know, but, bigger but TVs but, than but you, you will ever want the, in your home, right? If you ignore the LeBron James and, you know, uh, Drew Brees sets, what do, we, uh, what do we have? I mean, I think the biggest change is just that, you know, last year UHD was sort of a novelty, and what's happened, it's really transitioned so that in almost every brand, the UHD TVs or Ultra, you know, HD TVs are their just flagship products. So they've just become part of the product line versus this, you know, sort of oddity that they've they've added to, you so, know, the product. So in other words, there's the like bargain basement big box TV that uh, that's the mass market TV. Then there's the sort of like if you care about quality, step up from that, and then I don't know, maybe one or two steps up from that, and then finally your your best TV that you can get, your top TV is Ultra yeah. HD. Yeah, and, right? and in, in a lot of instances, um, you know, there's two or three series of those TVs, so it's not just you know one line. They're even within you know the the Ultra HD sets. They're segmenting them so the the less expensive one that doesn't have as many bells and whistles, mm -hmm. and then you can step up to the flagship models, typically in the biggest screen sizes. You know the internet stuff, 3D, all of those kinds of features. Yeah, it's worth asking uh, quickly about the. There's the the smart TV seems to have been a big push a couple of years ago. Then you saw 3D TV, but smart TV, 3D TV has sort of waned, but smart TV didn't really go away. In fact, it's become more, more pivotal and important than ever, right? And we'll get to content in a minute, but just in terms of how, what the evolution of the smartness of a smart TV has been, what, what have you seen there? Yeah, you know, the thing is, is that, um, you know, obviously as the amount of content has expanded, it's been a real struggle for some manufacturers to figure out, you know, how do they manage, how do they let their customers manage and access that content. So, you know, you have streaming services, you have regular TV services, and I think what we've seen is that um, these things are being more closely integrated, and so when you In, in what way, meaning like for the consumer, they, they, they won't be able to tell the difference between their cable uh, well, just how you get their, it, right, yeah. so that when you search for something, it will give you the option, oh, it's available on cable, oh, it's available via a streaming service, oh, oh cable, it's available on the internet. the cable industry loves that, right? Well, I think the cable industry is just happy that you're still connected to them at this yeah. point. Um, and so, you know, cable industry obviously is also fighting back with their own TV Everywhere, you mm -hmm. know, initiatives. So they're trying to figure out how to stay in the game by, you know, adding sort of expanded capabilities to what they're already giving you. So being able to watch their stuff on tablets away from the home. Yeah, and I want to get back to you on content, but but I want to talk to Terry about the fact that it's interesting, 4K is, a, or Ultra HD, is not just about the set where you display it, it's also about it goes all the way to how you capture it. And I think a lot of people just assume that 4K is some Hollywoody thing right. uh, that's going to come out of uh, Hollywood, but actually, the technology leading the way is actually in the camcorders themselves and in the cameras themselves. Talk to me about what we've seen this year in cameras. Well, it's interesting uh, with um, this sort of uh, technology. That happened uh, initially uh, years ago with just HD, where you know it came out on TVs first, and people didn't know what to do with it. Right? You know, it's great. You know, but wow, my you know standard definition looks kind of you know awful. Well, <laughs> you know, same thing is going to be happening now yet again. But 4K, you know, is is now coming into uh, camcorders. Over the summer, Sony had a $4,500 one, which really isn't for consumers. But that does at sound the show, like Hollywood prices. Right. Uh, uh, but right now, at the show, uh, Sony announced the uh, AX100. It's a, a, a $2,000 uh, 4K Ultra HD uh, camcorder. Takes that resolution. You can hook it up via HDMI uh, from the camcorder to your uh, 4K set and watch, you know, in, in full uh, 4K quality. So, so do, it's, stepping now, up the, it's stepping up the resolution. Now, $2,000 is still kind of high, right? It is, so yeah, where, yeah. What, what type of consumer are we talking about there? Well, again, these are the you know, early adopters for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with, with uh, regular HD, you know, 1080 full HD uh, camcorders, down around $200, $300 at this point yeah, uh, for I mean, the cheapest ones. Well, they have, uh, to, they have to sell them somehow, right? Well, here's the thing. Okay. You know, you have kids, I have kids. Uh, the the when, when you have like a young kid and you're talking to parents, you're like, well, you're going to future proof your, your videos. Uh, in the future, you're going to get 4K. So you were asking before about like who's buying these things. Well, 
it's hard to know right now other than the early adopters, but I can think, you know, parents, well, you know, that content is golden when you're thinking about like And you uh, want to be able to see every kids. detail of the drool, right. and, all the, the drool and the oatmeal all, stuck to their all, face. All the, all the little, you know, uh, you know, the Gerber stuff all over the <laughs> face, you know, yeah. It, it, it's, but, you know, so what you're saying though is that the first content you might be able to see on your Ultra HD TV if you were going to buy one. If you're the early adopter and you're willing yeah. to throw down tons of cash on yeah. both your Ultra HD set and your, uh, and, and your uh, camcorder, the first thing you may end up seeing is actually your own children in ultra high definition. It, or, it, it, the, I mean, the irony is that actually Sony is the only company that's provided ultra HD content. They have a media server, so you can get movies from Sony Pictures and stuff. I was going to say, though, to their credit, you can actually take a Sony camcorder, uh, ultra HD camcorder, and plug it into a different television, yes. believe it or not. Which yeah, is yeah, a, nice, yeah. a nice concept. But, you know, I mean, this is an industry that if, you, if they don't innovate and come out with something new, they're going to have a hard time. Yeah. So, you know, they tried to do that a couple years with 3D. 3D did not take off yeah. the way that they hoped. It wasn't the drive for them. So, you know, manufacturers are really looking at Ultra HD as a way for people to buy new TVs when they don't have to buy anyone. The TV and, doesn't break, you but know. It, but it feels like a real, uh, you know, 3D was one of those really um, exciting things a few years ago with camcorders and, it was exciting wow, to the industry anyway. Exciting to the industry. <laughs> well, no, I mean, with, with some people, I mean, I love 3D sure. watching, you know, uh, but but we were split in my family. My wife hated the 3D video I took of my kids. And you so, know what's amazing? It looked, is it, it looked weird. Two people in a room, somebody you have to come to some sort of agreement right. about 3D, right? Like you, right, like right. one person may not want to do it and the other person may not do, want to do it. It's an actual argument. But Ultra HD, you don't have that, no, right? You're sitting exactly, down and it's, it's not like two people are going sit, to sit there saying, I want to watch it in HD. I want to watch it in Ultra <laughs> HD. If you bought the set, you're just going to watch it in the best possible resolution. But and it's you, also exciting to see in the, like, this happening with camcorders because camcorders have just been completely creamed in the marketplace. Sure. Because is this what, the is this the salvation of camcorders? Well, I mean, it could be in that when uh, the this happened in 2005 when Sony came out with the first consumer-based HD camcorder. Well, there was a lot more interest in camcorders at sure. that time, and then it, it, it kind of sunk. But again, you didn't have smartphones at that time. Well, you know, smartphones don't do 4K. Yeah. Now, yeah. yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if you know because this this camcorder has 3.5 inch LCD. It's got a viewfinder. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got lots of great features on it. It's image stabilized, which you know it, it's just so superior quality that you would never get in a smartphone, even yeah. if it it's did the, work. It's the it's the SLR yes. to the uh, to the you know I guess the point and shoot right. uh, that would that is the point and shoots are kind of going away, much like they're in the yeah. camera business. The high quality stuff might actually have some traction, especially right. as quality becomes an issue. And now I, I want to uh, do one more th uh, thing on ca on cameras before we uh, jump back to TVs and content. Sure. But uh, there is this bl there's been this blurring of the line between a camera, yes. uh, between a conventional body camera and a camcorder, such to the point where I'm not even sure customers know what to buy now if they're going to get it in the market. It's a good point. One point of differentiation seems to be camcorders seem to have leapt into, in an aggressive way, uh, 4K. Uh, or Ultra HD. Yeah. I love the I love the fact that there's multiple terms for everything, but yeah. for the for the purposes of the conversation, we'll call it Ultra HD. Camcorders can do it. Conventional body cameras actually can't right now, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, no, they, there's. So what's holding them back? Uh, again, I think it's just time, and 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 then just uh, I mean, sadly, camera the camera companies have been slow on a lot of things in terms of adopting mm -hmm. them. Um, I mean, I, I could certainly see uh, a company like Samsung hopping into that because they they like Sony do TVs and other yeah, unlike a unlike a like a Canon, Canon or, or a Nikon, Nikon where they're right. not in the TV business they and don't phones. have the interest in So pushing. if they sell more phones yeah, exactly. and they don't sell as many cameras it's not quite as bad as if right, all you right. sell are cameras. And I think I think that's, that's point, true. Yeah. But I think uh, you know uh, both uh, Canon and Nikon do have uh, high end SLRs and um, um, high-end cameras that do HD, so they will be adopting it, I'm sure, but just right, not, not, not as of yet, so. Okay. Um, so, uh, so if there was, once you get past watching your kids on your Ultra HD set, and there's only so much, you know, drool and first steps you can take, you eventually want to watch something else, some professionally produced content, whether it be TV, movies, what have you. Um, and not Jim, your friends and relatives yeah, killing kids. Exactly. Yeah, they don't, they don't want to come over, come over one more kids. time to watch my family uh, Family movie night, Friday night, I got the popcorn. So, so 
what about movies? What about TV? Uh, Jim, what, what have you been seeing in terms of content? Who's going to actually deliver 4K TV to these sets, or is anybody in the near future? Yeah, I mean, I mean, that was sort of the second part. You know, there's the hardware part, and then there's the, the content part of it. And so we saw a number of announcements. Uh, Netflix was at a bunch of press conferences saying that at some point in the first half of this year, they'll be able to support 4K. There's a new video format called HEVC. It's, it's much more efficient, and what it's allowing them to do is to take this higher quality content and send it over the same bandwidth or same pipes that they're sending stuff over now. So that's a big issue. So who's going to be the first in there? Is it going to be the cable industry? Is it going to be the uh, is it going to be the movie industry? Or is it going to be the streaming players? It's, it's a lot easier for streaming to deal with it because they don't have the infrastructure that broadcast does. So it always takes broadcast a little longer. Um, so that's why we're seeing Netflix. You know, my guess is Amazon will have to, for competitive reasons, move into that space. There's a new service called Engo, which I think is also going to do it. But it's easier to deliver that content over the internet. That said, DirecTV is already in an investor report, said that probably next year they'll launch it. You know, they were very aggressive with 3D. And for a broadcaster yeah, that, standpoint, that worked out well. that's tempered their enthusiasm. They sort of stepped back and said, let's, let's see if this is real. Okay. You know, so uh, 3Net, which was another 3D company, recently said that they will allocate some of their programming bandwidth for uh, 4K. So it's all happening. Um, but it's kind of, you know, it's going to be slow, so I don't think we'll see a lot of movement until um, probably the middle of the year to the back half of the year. Okay. But certainly people will be able to look at more content. And YouTube supports uh, 4K right now. So when you talk about the user-generated content, there's a place to put so it. others other can watch your kids. Right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I want to wrap it up here with, a, uh, with just sort of a bullet-pointed uh, TVs. It, it, are, should you be in the market for a 4K TV right now, um, or should you wait? I know it's a blanket question, it's hard to answer, but... If yeah. you... I mean, you know, I've said this before, you know, this is an industry that rewards procrastinators. You know, the prices are going to be cheaper if you wait. Um, you know, if you have to buy a TV, then you may think about purchasing one of these TVs. We're expecting prices to drop about 40% this year, so they're not as wickedly expensive. The problem is, is that they're really pushing uh, Ultra HD as, as a big screen format, and you still pay a price premium for a TV for over a 60 set, inches. Right? So, you know, you're saving money because Ultra HD is going down, but you're paying more because, uh, you know, the bigger panels are more expensive to make. So but, uh, my advice would be, unless you really need one, wait. Um, if you're buying a main TV for your house, consider one. If you're one of those people who just really want to future-proof your, your purchase, and you care about visual quality, some people don't. Okay, Derry, what about you? Um, well, buy into the uh, the okay. Ultra HD camcorders or wait? Well, I definitely wait. Uh, you know, you know, this is just the first one. Uh, you know, talking about drooling, I was definitely drooling on some of the <laughs> elements on on that. Uh, sad to say, but I would definitely wait because uh, very quickly this will, you know, I think spread to other products like you know, uh, action cams and, and, and cameras, uh, so 4K. And God forbid uh, cell phones. <laughs> and, and, and God forbid cell phones. But, you know, I, I think that that's, you know, looking at what your needs are mm -hmm. and then seeing what's out there. Uh, you know, just one product is, is, is too little at the consumer space for right now. Cool, TVs are, you know, people are also going to have to figure out if they want a curved TV. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, one well, of the other things we saw a lot of. So. That's a good point. Yeah, so uh, the TVs, not only the curve, but also bend and flex. Yeah, we've uh, seen prototypes of those. Um, I'm not so sure exactly why. No curved camcorders yet. So well, novelty or, uh, or 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 actual product. If you, if that you have a child under the age of 12 years old, having a TV that's going to bend and unbend via the remote control is probably a scary thing. Nah, <laughs> that's a good. But um, you know, I, I think they're just playing around with tech, technology right now, and there are sometimes they do things just because they can, not because anyone really wants them to. Mm -hmm. And I think flexible TV, uh, at least as they're showing it now, is probably one of those things. All right, well, so so you have it. Uh, you're going to see ultra, tons of Ultra HD TVs, camcorders, and even curved TVs this year. Um, but you probably shouldn't find them just yet. Uh, this is Glendarine, Jim Wilcox, Terry Sullivan for Consumer Reports. You can check out more of our coverage at consumerreports.org slash CES.